Welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're now moving into our second segment for uh, today. And at this particular point, our conversation is going to shift. Now it's shifting uh, to Galen University. Uh, they've got their recruitment drive going on. And I'll tell you what else. They've got two new online courses going on as well. So they'd like for you to know about that. And we've got folks in to tell you about it. We have Ms. Sherry Gibbs with us. She's a Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Science and Technology. We also have Dr. Sylvia Catus, who is the Dean of uh, the Faculty of Business and Entrepreneurship, and Dr. Dorian Barrow, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Education. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, thanks. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm loving the energy and I'm, I'm loving the spirit. Um, Galen University, um, I'll tell you what you guys are doing excellent. You guys are actually um, making sure your students uh, spread the word because Every time you go around and you hear Galen, it's actually these young students saying, that's my university, that's my, uh, that's my alma mater. Let's get a brief uh, history of uh, the university when it got started and what's going on at this particular point, especially during this pandemic. Galen University is a private university, um, one of two universities in Belize. It started in 2003 mm -hmm. and um, uh, it started on a charter from the state, from, from the Ministry of Education, and we have developed from there um, uh, to the point now where we are offering 17 programs, including a graduate program, um, an MBA program, um, and 15 bachelor's degree programs, an associate degree, and an associate degree program. And this, this, this year, we are going to be adding some more and um, that is going to be the subject of the conversation today. Okay. Now, of course, uh, schools are a lot different this time around. This yeah. time around, and we were talking during the break uh, that uh, your campus is is essentially empty because you don't have your students there. Um, talk to us about the transition of having uh, everyone online. I think, uh, Dr. Barrow, you noted that actually participation online is higher. Yes, it's very much higher, uh, much higher than we had anticipated. Fortunately, we had two things. We had the infrastructure in place, yeah. um, and we had the, the experience, the expertise mm -hmm. in terms of offering the program. So when um, we had to, to um, transfer all our programs from, uh, that, the, that we had that we were offering face-to-face -to, -face to online, it was it was seamless. It was yeah. really, really, really and truly seamless. The people who teach in this program have been teaching online for, as we say, over 70 years. Mm -hmm. So they 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 they're, they're very proficient at it. And as I said, the infrastructure was in place, and we were and we were ready to do it. Yeah. So um, students um, um, uh, made the transition. Um, to a large extent, effortless. Yeah. Wait, were you able to to um, transition all of your programs to online? Let, let's get uh, the dean of um, dean Gibbs in, please, to tell us more about that. Because you have things like archaeology too. I mean, how do you how do you get do that you into that? an yeah. online system? Yeah, <laughs> it's that was a bit of a struggle, and I, I the students. I mean, you have to share their their disappointment, but we've been working with that. Um, there have been finding activities for them to do, um, but the Maya prehistory class, you can imagine how difficult that is to do yeah. online when yeah. you think of where we are situated. Um, we haven't been able to get field trips. We're hoping it just, you know, we just keep watching the news and seeing how things are, are looking. Um, you know, we, we can't get more than 10 people together. Yeah. Um, yeah worse than a van, right? And, and yeah. once you get to a site, it's easy, then they can spread around and you don't have to worry about social distancing, but yeah. um, like transportation. So it's it's been frustrating, um, <laughs> but the students are good and they're hanging in. Um, and um, what I would like to see us do is when uh, when there is some sort of normalcy back and we can get together, we'll, we'll do a number of trips and get them out there so that we can, uh, yeah. Um, you know, they have the opportunity then to show us what they've learned and yeah. what yeah. they've been able to, yeah. to absorb um, and, and getting them out there. So, yeah. 
and the, yeah. Huh? So that, that's the one I thought of in, in how you'd be able to transition online. But in fact, the others, uh, it maybe it was more seamless. Tell us about uh, what's currently offered as your online program. So everything right now, and the students have been really great because they have all taken at least one online class, so um, it wasn't totally foreign to them. Okay. Uh, so um, everything, our vet program was already primarily online, that's mm -hmm. an associate's degree. The anthropology program, environmental science is on, criminal justice is already an online based program, so that wasn't a problem. Um, computer science has been... Um, kind of a hybrid, some online, some face-to-face, -face, so it wasn't that difficult to make that transition either. Um, some of our programs, um, Dr. Patuth, for example, can talk about how she has a face-to-face -face accounting program and then an online accounting program. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was pretty easy to make that shift over. It's really more of the concern for students and working with them as they struggle through this because our face-to-face -face students aren't used to being just online. Uh, they really miss coming to campus, and I get those messages a lot. It's not yeah. quite the same. Um, but they're doing good, and they're hanging in there, and we're also really supporting them yeah. uh, with this challenge. So yeah. let's get Dr. Katus in to tell us about uh, the experience. I mean, um, you know, we're so used to, we were so used to um, having, having our students uh, very close up front and being hands-on into what they, what they have to learn. Dr. Katus? What is this experience like for you? Well, one of, one of the things that we've realized, having all our students online, especially your younger students, they do miss the campus environment. But what we do is constant communication with them. We have an excellent serv our student services director, and they, she sends out newsletters, she sends out weekly exercise from the students who are athletic scholars. Of course, they can't do any games now, mm -hmm. but we involve our athletic scholars with creating videos that we send out to our student exercise videos, etc. And also just motivational messages go out if conferences are coming up that we think our students would be interested in. And of course, we consistently let them know that the counselor is available, we're available. So we find that it's more touch we have to do with them yeah. online since they're not on campus. And that seems to be working well. We've even, some of our students even started a news journal, uh, which you'll see oh. coming quite soon. So we're just finding ways, and you know, a big part of our program is the, um, the Galen, the Work Scholarship Program. So we have had to find things for these students to do. So we have them deploy doing different things that keep the environment, that uh, communication environment going with our students. Mm -hmm. In terms of internship, the programs in the Faculty of Business and Entrepreneurship, several of them have internships. Mm -hmm. One of, is the accounting program. And um, what we've had to do there, and most unfortunate, because our students usually do their internships with the top accounting firms in Belize. Mm -hmm. And because of social distances in particular, our students were not able to. So we've had to do capstone projects with them. And we also have given them the opportunity if they want to come back at some other point when everything opens up, we can still work out an internship for them. It's, a, you know, it, it's, it's definitely, um, and, I, and I'd like for you guys to use this platform at this particular point to touch on some of the concerns because I'm sure some of the students would have that and I'm sure you guys would like to clear those up besides the fact that uh, they're not able to go on campus, besides the fact that they might not be able to um, go uh, for their internship. What are some of the concerns that you guys would like to address for your students at this point? Well, one of the one of the one of the major concerns of many of the students is financing, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard times. Uh, their parents, some of their parents, have lost their jobs. Some of them have uh, are, are in a now reduced economic situation. So, one of the things that we have done in order to respond to that is to strengthen our financial services division. Um, we offer students not only you now um, payment plans uh, where they could pay their bill over a long period of time, mm -hmm. but we have strengthened the, the, the student loan program where if they want to access 
if they want to access the financing to complete their their um, their yeah. education, they have that they have that available. So financing have been one to me. Beans will talk about some of the other things that. Oh wow! Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it's really great that you're looking at, at the current economic situation um, and taking that into consideration. Have you lost, uh, have you had some students withdraw over the course of uh, this year? We've had... One or two students have withdrawn, one or two, but that, Not really. uh, that because primarily of financing. Okay. Uh, some of them have withdrawn. Um, uh, I know one case a student had to withdraw because um, he's the head of a household and um, and there was a case of COVID-19 uh, within the household mm. and they had to be quarantined and all that kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Um, one or two of them do have the financial challenge, as I say, but we try and uh, we try to work, and see with we them. work with them. Work, okay. work with them in order to solve that. So that that has not been the source okay. of of any major concern in terms of okay. withdrawal of students. All right. But we've what's happened is as soon as we find out, um, as we were saying earlier, just that constant communication with students, mm -hmm. our faculty have been really great too, letting us know that if there's a student that hasn't shown up for a couple of classes or haven't submitted any assignments, they let the deans know and the registrar know. And we reach out to them to find out what's happening, what's going on. Um, and as Sylvia had said, our counselor then, she can reach out to them as well so we can understand where the challenges are for the students. And if they are financial and if they're worried that they can't pay, then we make sure that they get that financial counseling mm -hmm. um, and that we work with them to ensure that they can stay in. Yeah. Um, it, what we've actually seen is an increase. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been well, really oh, great, really interesting. That was that was going to be my next question. So right. I think at the same time where challenges present themselves, there are also opportunities. And there's some people who were probably desperately waiting for some of your programs to be all <laughs> online yeah. uh, rather than making uh, the journey to, to, to San Ignacio. So have you, what, what's the impact that you've seen in enrollment so far um, in moving forward? I just want to add uh, to what Dr. Bar one decision that we also made that we would not drop any students from courses because of their inability to pay. Oh, wow. And that Lovely. or everybody agreed to that and and that is working very well with students. But going back to what Dean Gibbs said, yes, our enrollment has increased. We were ourselves surprised, pleasantly surprised. It did increase because what we're finding is People now have time. Mm. They still have, may still have a little money too. They have time now to, to add on more courses. There might be people who are considering going back to school and now they realize they either have to upskill or reskill and going back to the university to get that degree or that certificate. Yeah. Yeah. This is time for them to do that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. One of the benefits too with us being online is they don't have to pay right now for housing, for rent. So yeah. I think that's been a real big bonus for a lot of, a lot of the uh, you know parents if they're helping to fund <laughs> their uh, their kids going to school. Yeah. The reputability, the transportation. yeah, definitely, and, and and yeah, and that's right there in this in Central Farm area. Uh, so we know, and it's a beautiful compound. I can tell you guys that the reputability of Galen University definitely stands out. Um, but you guys also are making the pitch of two brand yeah. new online courses. Now, what are those? One of the things that we found out um, through a marketing survey, a marketing activities, is that there is an increasing need for short-term programs. As you know, we offer um, bachelor's degree programs, master's degree programs, and people um are, 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 um there's a sector of the population that wants shorter term programs mm -hmm. so what we have done is to respond to that we actually started in january of this year and we are just expanding that now to offer these um diploma programs or these certificate programs these mm -hmm. one year certificate programs and one of the New programs that we are offering is a postgraduate certificate in leadership. Wow. So a one program, a five course program, and we are offering this in conjunction with the Ministry of Education. Ministry of Education 
have asked us to respond to this particular need. And this is one of the programs that's available. It's, it's one of the cheapest post graduate programs available, not only in the country, but in the region. Wow. Uh, one year, there are five courses. You take one course at a time, and, um, and at the end of that, you get a postgraduate um, 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 certificate in leadership. It's a part of a, of a, of, it's a two part program um, uh, of a master's degree in education and leadership, and this is, this is the first part. Yeah. Okay. And so you said you did a market survey to kind of find out what people were interested in. Uh, tell us a bit about, about uh, the details of what you found out. Well, people are interested in, as I said, short-term courses. They are interested in courses like this in terms of leadership. They're interested in courses like accounting. Um, they're interested in online, mm -hmm. online opportunities because a lot of them were, were uh, uh, are working for uh, people are trying to um, 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 survive in that fight. They're also, they, they also indicated that they, that, that they are happy with the stability of Galen. Um, some of our other institutions have not been that stable. Um, um, we have gone on continuously, undisrupted. They're happy about that. Um, so those are some of the things that they, that, that, that they, that, that, they, um, yeah. that, they, that the inquiry led to. And so, uh, Dr. Katus, of course, uh, the certificate in accounting, I imagine um, that's also something that people can really benefit uh, from adding it to their resume or trying to get that promotion at work. Tell us more about that. One of the things that we're responding to, our research shows that people are interested in what's called stackable qualification. That's right. They may not necessarily have the time to go a full four years to get a degree, but they might be interested in taking a one year or a six month. And so these qualifications would stop to eventually become a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, we've started out pretty much with the uh, accounting certificate program. We have pretty much customized it for working adults who want additional uh, technical skills or they want to get into some kind of continuous professional development program. And um, it's, we can also customize it even further. For example, we had a firm who was interested in, they promoted one of their employees to a higher level position. That, that person had a lot of financial background, but he did not have specific accounting background, mm. specific, lots of fact. So they asked us to customize a program for their company for that specific department. Mm. So we're available for doing things like that, customized professional development program. And em employees will find that they themselves will want to be upskilling or reskilling their employees. And we're available for that kind of thing. Okay. And so does that mean that you will be seeing um, more short courses coming out of Galen in the near future as well? For sure, you will be seeing more courses like that. In addition to that, we are partnering, uh, and maybe a little premature to announce, but I don't think so. We are currently in discussion with the Belize Tourism Board mm. uh, to provide an enhanced gold standard program. And what that enhanced program means is that not only are they putting out the health and safety protocols, the gold standard uh, health and safety protocols but they realize that many of these properties may not have people with the appropriate uh, skills let's say in human resource management yeah. or in communication or or in supervision yeah. and there, these people who are identified that have to manage these gold standard programs and they have to have these additional skills to be able to make it successful you know i'm glad you said that because you know for the most part it's overlooked of uh, supervisory skills and uh, PR skills. These things are very important, especially when dealing with the tourism industry, because you actually, uh, you actually put a different uh, insight into the tourist uh, mentality of what our country is about. No, so, well, uh -huh, sure. The Belize Tourism Board have done an excellent job in developing the gold standard program. Mm -hmm. But the part that we have to be careful about is the implementation. 
and they want to assure that these things are implemented properly and that the people who have to implement them are properly equipped to do so. So they have asked Galen to come in, look at the program and see how we can enhance that. Fantastic. So let's talk about uh, enrolling. Um, what are the steps in enrolling in Galen University, especially with such reputability? One of the important names to remember in enrolling in Galen is Travis Leonard. Why? T. Leonard <laughs> at galen.edu.bc. Um, he's the, the gatekeeper in a way um, um, of all students who enter Galen. Yeah. You just get in contact with him at that email, T. Lennon at galen.edu.bc and he is going to send you the application starts with an application you fill out the application you submit that to him and then the process starts and within a few weeks if if, if not less mm -hmm. um, um the process will be completed yeah. so you apply <laughs> your transcripts are evaluated by the registrar and um, you are then sent uh, um, a letter of acceptance with a pathway, and then you can register for courses. It is at that point also that you can access your financial services um, in order to discuss your financing, uh, your financing needs. And uh, are you still accepting applications at this time? We're accepting applications for the spring semester. Okay. I believe the first, like the second week of January. January. And yeah. of course, we will start our school recruitment shortly. Mm -hmm. And so, if there are any uh, tertiary level institutions who want to talk with us, of course, we reach out as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, please contact Mr. Lennon, and we can make arrangements for virtual recruitment of their students. All right. Well, it's and it's so much easier now too with being online. That if students, potential students, want to reach out to us, um, we could easily have meetings. So I'm having a meeting with a student this afternoon. Um, she's up in the U.S. Um, has been sort of stuck up there, uh, but she's really interested. And even just you know, find out what is it that she can do here, and what does this mean for her moving forward if she gets a degree with us? What is she going to be able to do? And I think those conversations are really important for anyone who's considering going on um, to uh, higher education you want to make sure that what you're going to be getting yourself into because it is a financial commitment is uh, going to be really impactful for you mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's really easy for us to be able to to meet with students like this yeah. and uh, talk with them about their plans Wow. All right. And so uh, anyone who is interested, they can make contact uh, with uh, Mr. Lennon and perhaps make appointments, talk about the possibilities for the programs that exist. As you noted, all your programs are online now. Is there anything that you need to say to people in terms of what you cannot offer? So in other words, right now, something's on hold until you can resume face to face. None of our regular programs are on hold. Okay. Um, our biggest constraints seem to be, uh, in term, I'm in, I'll speak specifically to the faculty of um, business and entrepreneurship, yeah. is the, are the internships. Uh, but even in Dr. Barra's program, they have come up with a very novel way of, uh, providing, of providing internship programs. Innovative way of. Mm -hmm. Doing internship. As a matter of fact, today, uh, Dr. Harrison, who invented that program, is presenting it to the Ministry of Education. Fantastic. Uh, I didn't want to steal your Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But so, and this also gives us an opportunity to review our curriculum. In fact, we're undergoing a huge uh, quality assurance program. In fact, just about every week, we meet about two, three weeks, we've um, hired a quality assurance officer, um, Dr. Angel Kahl, who has a tremendous amount of expertise in this area, mm -hmm. uh, has been the person working with us uh, for the last several months. 
And so we're working towards accreditation. And so it's just really been a good opportunity uh, to just review our programs, um, to see what other programs we need to bring on board, look at the market. So, you know, it's not all bad. Lots of goods have, yeah. good yeah. have come to academia, yeah. at least to Galen University, yeah. as a result of having to be home. <laughs> We are learning and adapting, all yeah, of us. Look are. at us having this conversation over Zoom. I think it was just... Our digital, <laughs> our digital touch leaders, we may not be able to communicate physically with them, yeah. but we have high digital touch yeah. with them. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, thank you very much for thank telling you. us all about what you've been up to. And um, uh, I believe that people will definitely be interested in finding out more. We'll have that information on our Facebook page. And as you noted, uh, they can email the school as well. Thank you, Thank you. and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. So there we go. An excellent conversation there with uh, reps of Galen University. Their uh, recruitment drive is on. And they've got two new courses you could actually take advantage of. And uh, we're about to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the challenges that's facing the agricultural industry in Belize. So stay with us. We'll be right back.